We can't have climate justice without debt justice. My name's Sky, and I'm an organiser at Debt Justice. In this video, I'll be outlining four key points to show how the climate and debt crises are interconnected. I'll also explain how a new debt justice law would not only get debt cancelled, but help countries tackle the climate crisis too. First, I want to tell you about the devastating effect the debt crisis is having on countries' ability to address the climate crisis. There are 54 countries in debt crisis right now. Millions of people are being denied justice because financial giants are trapping their countries in unjust debt. To make matters even worse, many of the same countries are dealing with the worst impacts of climate change, like flooding, droughts and hurricanes. They're facing a double injustice. Not only are they the least responsible for causing the climate crisis, being trapped in high debt levels means countries can't spend money preparing for or responding to climate disasters. In fact, lower income countries are spending over five times more on debt repayments than they are on addressing the climate crisis. Let me give you an example. Do you remember the devastating floods in Pakistan in 2022? The impact of these was twice as bad because of the climate crisis. As well as the catastrophic human impact, the floods decimated houses, schools and infrastructure. 8 million people were displaced and 33 million people were affected. That's the equivalent of half the population of the UK. Communities there have still not been able to fully rebuild because of the country's huge debt burden. Pakistan was already in debt crisis before the floods. As well as the unimaginable human cost of the floods, the damage to the country has been predicted to cost around $40 billion. Because rich countries have pledged much less than this to help, Pakistan has had little choice but to take on even more debt. This meant that in 2023, the government was forecast to spend an enormous 47% of government revenue on debt repayments to foreign lenders. Almost half of the country's revenue is going out of Pakistan to overseas lenders, instead of being used to rebuild the country and support communities left destitute. Pakistan is stuck in an unjust climate debt trap. One of the most striking injustices of the situation is that Pakistan is responsible for less than 1% of global carbon emissions, so bears almost no responsibility for the climate crisis which caused these unprecedented floods. Yet, it is being forced to pay for it. Many activists around the world have called for the rich countries most responsible for the climate crisis to pay a climate debt to countries like Pakistan. This is a form of reparations to help countries mitigate the impacts of the crisis and rebuild after disasters. Secondly, being trapped in unjust debt to financial giants means lower income countries don't have the money to move to low carbon economies. In fact, many countries are being pushed further into fossil fuel dependency because of their debt. We know we need to phase out fossil fuels and transition to sustainable energy if we're to have any chance of preventing climate breakdown. But many lower income countries are stuck between a rock and a hard place. There are three main reasons for this. Firstly, paying high levels of unjust debt means there's no spare cash to fund a green transition to a low carbon economy. Secondly, many are left with little alternative but to exploit their natural resources, including fossil fuels, to repay unsustainable debts. And third, many lower income countries are trapped in fossil fuel production because of conditions attached to loans. In Argentina, for example, the government and the Western-dominated International Monetary Fund are pushing the development of the fracking of oil and gas. They see this as a way to solve the country's debt crisis and wider economic problems. This is despite fierce resistance from local and indigenous communities who have highlighted the harms of these projects for people, ecosystems and the climate. Third, greedy lenders are profiting from the climate emergency. There are countless examples of devastation caused by climate change, and we know that extreme weather events are only going to get more and more frequent. Despite this, countries in debt crisis often keep having to pay unjust debts even when disaster hits. What's worse, many countries are being forced to pay more as private lenders hike up interest rates on their loans to climate vulnerable countries in order to cover the increased risk of repayments being interrupted by climate events. Take the example of Dominica, one of the Caribbean nations that was struck by Hurricane Maria in 2017. The hurricane destroyed over 90% of the island's structures and caused $2 billion worth of damage. People lost their homes and livelihoods, and large parts of the island's rainforest were destroyed. The country's debt rose from 69% of GDP in 2015 to almost 100% by 2019. Despite this complete devastation, there was no pause in Dominica's debt repayments or any debt cancellation. 45% of Dominica's external debt repayments are owed to foreign lenders. 
Even at this point of complete crisis, they expect to be paid in full. The climate crisis is impacting countries in debt in many devastating ways. Ghana is experiencing higher temperatures, more erratic rainfall, and sea level rise and erosion. These impacts have huge costs for the people of Ghana, which are impacting communities who are dependent on predictable weather for crops. Here's what Bernard Annaba from the Integrated Social Development Centre has to say about it. As a tropical country, we have over the years experienced heavy rainfalls. And over the years, rain pattern is said to have become very erratic. And because Ghana also, in terms of our agriculture system, is usually rain fed, it's a major problem for farmers. They are unable to plant adequately to make good use of the rains. And the rains also comes in a quantity that tends to destroy farms and property. And for the past decade, no year passes by without flooding in various parts of the country that destroys so much property, basically in the low-lying areas of the city, Accra. Uh, usually the flood causes death. Some people die, houses and property gets drowned uh, in the rains and they lose their crops. So climate change in relation to rain is a major issue in Ghana. And finally, when countries do try to get debt cancelled to free up money to spend on things like education, health and the climate crisis, private lenders are derailing the process. Ghana, for example, is trapped in a cycle of debt after years of irresponsible lending from Western corporations. Ghana applied for debt relief in early 2023. While the country has reached a preliminary deal for debt relief from other governments, this deal cannot go ahead until it also reaches a comparable deal with its private creditors. But so far, no such deal has been made. Despite being promised a quick debt relief process, Ghana remains in limbo. Meanwhile, people and communities in Ghana are experiencing the devastating effects of the debt and the climate crisis. So, what's the solution? Across the world, activists and campaigners in countries that are being hit by the double whammy of climate and debt crises are resisting. In Ghana, Bernard is part of efforts demanding debt justice for people and communities in the country, calling on key national and international decision makers to take urgent action now. The international processes in place for lower income countries to seek debt cancellation are failing. This is largely because private lenders refuse to offer the debt cancellation on the same terms as other lenders. If we could force private lenders to take part in debt cancellation, this could have a huge impact on countries' ability to put money into public services and tackle the climate emergency. In the UK, we're in a rare position to influence the debt situation right now. And this is where you come in. As you learned in the last tutorial, 90% of the private debt contracts for lower income countries are overseen by UK law. As we head towards a likely election in 2024, this means that we have a really big opportunity to push political parties to commit to a new debt justice law that would make it easier for countries to get debt cancelled. This can be a fast and quick way to ensure countries have more resources to respond to multiple crises, including the climate crisis. It could win justice for millions of people who are facing the worst impacts of both the climate and debt crises. We know this won't be enough on its own. We also need rich countries to pay their climate debt. This is why we work closely with climate justice groups around the world to hold rich countries accountable too. However, a debt justice law would play a vital role in freeing up resources for countries to invest in preparing for and responding to the climate crisis. We know we can't tackle the climate crisis without solving the debt crisis. The two are closely interlinked. We hope this tutorial has given you an insight into how a new debt justice law could have a broader impact than debt cancellation alone. It would also help countries tackle the climate crisis.